So two brown pelicans walk into a bar. No, wait, that's the wrong script. Never mind. Here it is. Two flying animals are traveling over the Pacific near the shores of California. You think you're looking at a regular brown pelican at this moment. True, the hunting technique is similar. But here, we're talking about a creature that lived long before pelicans. A pterosaur, one of the coolest animals from times when dinosaurs ruled our planet. They managed to survive for 150 million years before they went extinct, which is way longer than humans have been around. Although it may seem like that at first, we're not looking at a dinosaur, but at its close relative. It's a flying reptile and the very first animal with backbones that ever rose into the air. They started flying long before bats and birds even knew what being in the air felt like. These reptiles colonized almost all the continents, except Antarctica, and evolved into many sizes and shapes. The smallest one was no larger than a regular sparrow, while the biggest one had a wingspan of almost 40 feet. For a long time, paleontologists didn't know much about these unusual animals. Debates about them started at the end of the 18th century, when one paleontologist pulled out a big drawer full of fossils, showed a fragile skeleton as big as a hand. The ancient creature had a long, toothy snout, a neck like a giraffe, and pretty thin legs. Even later, researchers got so many things wrong about them. A lot of scientists thought pterosaurs were kind of slow and clumsy in the air, especially compared to birds. They believed these fellows couldn't even flap their wings or take off from the ground. Considering they were reptiles, the theory was that they were cold-blooded, like today's lizards and snakes. But the last three decades made scientists change their minds. Lots of these flying beasts lived in one region in Brazil. There used to be a big saltwater lagoon where they could live their best life. The view was nice too, since the African continent was on the horizon, separated by what would later become the Atlantic Ocean. The fossils of these creatures were tricky to find, though. Their bones were thin, like an eggshell filled with air, just like the bones of today's birds. This might have been good for flying, but bones like these usually don't remain intact after millions of years. But even though such fossils are rare, they're preserved pretty well. So they can give us a good picture of what these creatures were like. For instance, bigger pterosaurs had slender struts inside hollow wing bones, which gave them strength, but not too much additional weight. They were so light that it's possible they only had to open their enormous wings and the wind would just pick them up. Or perhaps it depended on the species. There are theories that these creatures had to run to gain momentum and lift their wings or climb trees and just take off from there. Computer models have shown that they most likely performed some mad hops. They would have to explosively jump into the air, stretching their wings, and that's it. They would generate enough lift with just one downstroke. Their muscles were really strong, ideal for flying longer routes, too. Pterosaurs are real evidence there were professional pilots millions of years ago. Their wings had a specific structure with fibers that helped stiffen and shape them. It's similar to the principal engineers use today when building airplane wings. Some of those ancient creatures had very precise piloting skills, especially while catching their food over the Jurassic lagoons, like this one. It would point out its snout like a spear skimming above the water, only using the tip of its lower jaw, plowing through the ocean. If it stumbled upon a fish, the creature would just catch it with its long slender teeth. In a way, they did catch their prey similar to brown pelicans. They would dive under the water and grab their snack. That's what the shape of the animal's skull tells us. They weren't just gliders, but also very skilled hunters. Some of them went after insects, while others dove into the water to catch fish. There were pterosaurs that even flew hundreds of miles across the open ocean to find food. These animals could perform such precise hunting actions because of their highly specialized brain, which worked more similarly to that of birds than of reptiles. No one knows why they disappeared, what exactly they looked like, and how a four-legged reptile managed to turn into such a professional flyer. Many scientists think they were descended from a small reptile that jumped from branch to branch. Maybe it moved like a modern flying squirrel, which just spreads its limbs and uses special flaps of skin attached to its limbs and body. That way, it cushions the fall. 
Over thousands or even millions of years, the fourth finger on each forelimb grew longer, the surface of the skin got bigger, and the animal became able to glide farther away. When this fella first took to the infinite skies, he could see a landscape none of us today would recognize. It was a giant supercontinent we know from history class, Pangaea. The continents we know today hadn't separated from one another yet. They were all part of one incredibly big landmass that stretched almost from pole to pole. Pangaea was the perfect spot for reptiles to arise and evolve. Before Pangaea, you could see a wide variety of sea life, such as bacteria, plants, or different species that lived in shallow waters at the edges of the landmass that would later turn into this massive supercontinent. But as the tectonic plates were moving, the animal and plant kingdoms were going through their own changes. By the time Pangaea formed, shallow seas had mostly diminished. It was a tough time if you weren't a reptile. Their skin and eggshells could withstand dry conditions. Back then, scary reptiles that looked like crocodiles were at the top of the food chain. There weren't too many dinosaurs. They lived on Pangaea from the beginning, but their time to shine came mostly after the supercontinent had moved apart. It was hard, but pterosaurs successfully went through all the challenges and adapted to the changing environment. When scientists found unusual remnants of a pterosaur in Kazakhstan, they showed the animal had hair-like fibers on its body. The researcher named the creature Hairy Devil. That changed our perspective on them and showed how different they were from the reptiles we know today. Lizards and crocodiles are cold-blooded, so they don't have an insulating layer covering their bodies. Their body heat goes up and down along with the ambient temperature. This hairy coat fits well with the idea that pterosaurs were warm-blooded and active flyers. Cold-blooded reptiles could flap their wings for a couple of minutes only. Some believe these cool creatures might have walked like pigeons on two legs, but it turns out they most likely moved similar to bats on all fours. Certain pterosaurs had lots of tiny teeth for eating small plants and animals in lakes, while others had not teeth but a beak like birds. One North American pterosaur had a big head with a huge backward-pointing crest on its skull. Scientists have been debating what this crest was for. Some think it was an air brake for landing, while others believe it helped the animal steer while flying. But one scientist had a different idea saying the big-crested ones were males and the small-crested ones were females. He believed the crests were like showy displays that males used to impress females, which is something that reminds of birds today. But today's birds didn't come from pterosaurs. Their ancestors were actually small dinosaurs that walked on land and were covered in feathers. But that's a story for another time.